Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Founders Era podcast. Ron Tomashenko here. Carlo Waltz. And today we're talking about what are the most unexpected frustrations of being an entrepreneur? So Trillo, what is one of the most frustrating things that you didn't expect that you have to deal with now? Now it's your problem. Talking to customers is mm-hmm. probably the, it may sound weird because it's like, oh yeah, to customers, talk else's to them. Job. <laughs> yeah, well, here's the problem I have where if I sign up for a service, for example, and for example, I signed up for a mixed panel for a visitor kit to do some like experimenting with, but also like compare products. Mm, <laughs> some yeah. So That's I got an email. They did this thing where they sent me my confirmation email, but it actually came from a salesperson. It was like their mm. personal email. Is there a way to get in your inbox and hit confirm? Then I started sending me at least three emails about like, let's hop on a call. Let's do all these things. I never replied to those emails. Mm. I marked them as spam. Right. But as an entrepreneur, you have to be doing that. You have to be constantly yeah. talking to your customers, getting feedback. You can't design in a, a box or a white wall, right? A drywall, mm-hmm. because you're just mm-hmm. not going to hear your customer. You're going to design something for you or really weird case. So that's the one frustration I have is like getting out of that shell and talking to customers. So mm-hmm. it's difficult. <laughs> yeah. No, I totally get it. Especially if as engineer or yeah. depending on what your background is it's not a skill set that you that you naturally may be drawn towards or it's not something that you're yeah. used to doing yeah you, yeah like you didn't start programming to talk to customers yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> like that's the number one reason why you're like oh great i get to have headphones all day and program right? <laughs> you know that's one of the benefits right yeah absolutely <laughs> No, for sure. You know, it's totally a challenge. I I 100% get that, you know. Um, And the thing too is different people respond to different things and different techniques Mm -hmm. and different approaches in different way, right? So using you as an example, that technique doesn't work for you. You immediately mark that as spam or you ignore it. It's noise. You have other things to worry about. You're like, I don't need this. I I don't need to be inundated with a bunch of emails about a product that I'm really just trialing, <laughs> you know? Right, just like or even if, I'm, if I'm signing up, you know? It, like, the idea of, like, cold emails and stuff like mm. that. I see people on Twitter all the time being like, this cold email campaign worked. I'm like, on who? Like, who did you <laughs> trick? Like, <laughs> it blows my mind that, like, that even worked. What a weird trick, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, mm. in back of my mind, I'm like, it'd be awesome to build an email app that completely mm. removes cold emails. <laughs> yeah. No, I 100%. Uh, you know, yeah. I will say this, I, I totally agree with you. A lot of the time, I'd say a significant majority of the time where I get an email, I'll just ignore it or blow it off. It's just noise. It's just noise that comes into my inbox. But every now and then on on rare occasion, there will be somebody who the stars align, whatever mm-hmm. have you happens, and they send me an email. It's called outreach email about something that I'm actually dealing with or researching or thinking about right now. Like I just walked out of a meeting with my former CTO, and we were talking about, oh, we need a way to ingest data and analytics for a new ETL process, whatever, whatever. And then someone will cold outreach me an email like, hey, I noticed you were in startup land and you Mm. probably could benefit from data and analytics. I'm like, how funny. We were literally just talking about that. So I'll be like, well, you know, I need to research the competitive landscape anyway. So I go ahead and accept it. So in that case, it worked because the timing just happened to be right. Mm. And the timing just happened to be perfect. So there are instances where like huh. it happens. So that's great because I didn't have to do the search. It right. landed in my lap, you know, but that's right. a coincidence, right? Things like that happen rarely. But if you shoot enough, you know, it's like, um, yeah, there's a story about a million monkeys on typewriters would eventually write Shakespeare <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> whatever it yeah. is, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's why spam s- still is a thing. People say, yeah. like, why, why do people still send spam? You know, because it basically costs nothing. You yeah. know, a few people to bite. Yeah. This catfishing oh, work man. because yeah. all you need is a few people to bite. That's hard for me being an entrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. just being in that space of like, just, you know, like salespeople, you know, I, I you know, as an engineer, I, I like to try to, design products that like 
kind of self-explanatory. So mm-hmm. you get in there, you're like, you, I know what this is. I know what I'm signing up for. There's mm-hmm. the site did everything it needs to do. You know, like there is a demo here for me to look at. There's not like mm-hmm. a contact us, which is when a product is more complicated, it totally makes sense. But mm-hmm. you know, if your product is just like, it literally does two things. Like yeah. in this case, this product schedules a tweet or something. It's like, you don't have to set up a demo to schedule a tweet, right? You can yeah. just create an infographic to show that or something. So yeah, yeah, it's hard. It's very hard, but that's that's hard for me. So what's what's hard for you? Yeah. Or unexpected, uh, I guess. Unexpected. Um, yeah. It is, um, this may sound cliche, but the unknown unknowns, right? So we were kind of chatting about this before the call. And whenever I predicted my roadmap and, you know, we talked about being impatient and I I made these expectations around product and and how long certain things would take. I did all of that based on limited information, the information that I, that I had and based on past experience, that's all I have, right? That's how I'm going to make my estimations, but that's just one thing that's notoriously difficult about estimation. You're going to do it based on your past experience, but we all know through experience, ironically, yeah, that yeah. every situation is unique and every situation is different. And then and past results and past experiences are no guarantee or any indication of future experiences right. or future events, you know? Right. Like the like, stock market, for example, the way that that's been going recently or, or, yeah. or really anything. Yeah. Like, say- yeah, like your your past experience, I guess, allows you to make it an estimate at all. Right. Exactly. Because without it, you just be like, I have no idea how long this yeah, will take. It's I have total no guess. idea. Like if you've never built an app before, you'd be like, I have no idea. That's mm-hmm. like a uh, thousand hours. Like I have <laughs> yeah. no idea. Like, you just don't know. Yeah. Right. But if you if you built an app, even a very small app, you have mm-hmm. something. You're like, okay, so this one's more complicated. So even if I 3X that small app, then okay, here's a number. Right. You mm-hmm. can get close, but it's not going to be it. Yeah. And expect it will happen. And it's not the same thing. Exactly. So that's a good point. Yeah, it's a good point. Exactly. Try to avoid those. <laughs> yeah, but you can't, right? Uh, Especially, <laughs> there's yeah, no way. Yeah. You have to make plans. You have to try to yeah. make a prediction of where you're going to go. And mm-hmm. there are only there's only so much you can do. Um, and we were talking yeah. about... Oh, go ahead. No, I was, I, I was just thinking, like, if you... There's a way... I, I, I would say there is a way to, like, to limit it by, I would say, mm-hmm. moving slow and methodical, which is mm-hmm. not how people build businesses. Yeah. nowadays like if you just kind of like i guess in a way like had lower expectations but you were <laughs> like kind of on a slower on a, like a you know like a slower timeline you know like mm-hmm. this app will be done when it's done type timeline mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. you know i'll i don't really have an expectation i'm going to use i'm going to get this month mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. the goal is to just slowly grow, grow and learn and grow and learn and go from there mm-hmm. you know eventually i'll be successful you know mm-hmm. so that's kind of there's a um 37 signals base camp those guys they wrote a book it doesn't have to be crazy at work and that's mm. kind of what they talk about you know they yeah. say i don't know if you've read it but in the book they say they don't make any plans beyond six months they think anything beyond mm. a six month plan is bullshit anyway I I mean, love even that. the six I month plan is kind of you're making it up right yeah there's no way to predict anything beyond that and they also have very specific rules and boundaries about how work operates. And they say, this is, you know, it may seem crazy and very counterculture to the US sort of right. hustle and bustle environment, right. but we've grown every year for the past however many years following the same exact approach. Right. And it works, you know, and it, people are not constantly burned out. People are not constantly overworked. We still achieve company goals, but we don't right. have these pie in the sky roadmaps because they're all made up anyway. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, why would we do this for whom to make ourselves yeah, better for, yeah. you know, whatever the case may yeah. be. So yep. counterintuitive. Too. Yeah. It's That's true. how you like. Yeah. But I will say this. I feel like they have the luxury of capital to rely upon in order to yeah. be able to operate in that way. I, you know, I don't yeah. know. Right. Maybe yeah. They've always been that way, but yeah, you could like it. it, it expectation is that like, you know, if you're starting a company, like, like a, tech startup today it's like well if you want to keep your day job and build it then sure right but you can't yeah. be like i'm gonna it's gonna become my job full time on that like that slow pace it's you gotta have money to yeah. survive yeah <laughs> that timeline you know like yeah 
yeah there's yeah there's not like a funding situation in that either that works if you got mm-hmm. vc funding like no you can't take your time yeah right <laughs> even if you get a bank loan the bank would be like no like you gotta pay us back like yeah that's not how this works yeah, yeah yeah you almost gotta have this luxury of like mm. all right i'm okay with having a job and doing you know this thing but it's not your main priority it's not even your main focus at that point so mm-hmm. Of course, you're going to have less to unexpect. You're not even <laughs> dedicating all your energy and, you know, like all your prowess on that, right? Mm-hmm. Just like, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, for sure. For sure. But I wanted to, we started kind of talking about this before the call, but I wanted to kind of go into this. And that's the yeah. idea behind the coastline paradox. This is something mm-hmm. that I learned from Mike Korn's director of engineering at Rosetta Stone. I don't know if he still does that, but this is one of the things that really kind of, illuminated my perspective on engineering estimation, really estimation in general. Mm. And I, I asked him, I said, how do you solve for estimation? How do you get more accurate engineering estimates? That's something that I constantly get pressure from, my, from the higher ups, the executive team, they want us to be able to accurately estimate something. And he said, if you figure it out, you tell me. I've been <laughs> doing this for 20 years, I still don't have an answer. Yeah. And I, I laughed. I'm like, that's kind of depressing. <laughs> yeah. But, but at the same time, I feel a little bit encouraged by that. And he said, you know right. why? It's because of the coastline paradox. And I said, what's the coastline paradox? And he told me, it's this idea that a coastline is a fractal, right? If you, it's exactly the same with engineering estimates. Imagine you're on a helicopter and you are a thousand meters away, or let's make it even further, 30,000 meters away. And you're looking at a coastline and you are expected to estimate what is the length of that coastline. You, you're, far, you're pretty far. You can't mm-hmm. see a lot. You don't have a lot of fidelity. So you're making an estimate. You say, you know what? I, I would say that coastline is probably about 500 kilometers. If I had to guess from here, like based on past experience of eyeballing islands, you know, right. <laughs> that coastline's right. about uh, 500 kilometers. I don't I remember what number I said. But then as you get closer, you realize, oh, you know what? There's a cape there and there's a bay. Mm-hmm. I didn't see that when I was far away. And there's some jagged rocks there. Mm-hmm. So if I factor that in and how it's a little bit more mm-hmm. detailed than I expected, I'm going to have to increase my estimate to about 800 kilometers. Yeah. You get closer yeah. and you're like, oh, you know what? There's a cave there that I didn't see. And yep. actually, it's um, I didn't realize there was an island part of the <laughs> island that went behind the mountain yep. so i'm um, gonna have to change my estimate to 1200 yep. you just more than doubled your estimate it's like mm-hmm. holy shit what happened it's like well i got closer and closer and i realized that i there were, i made a lot of assumptions what else can right. i do right you know? and that's the reality and and the truth is i think what i realized from this is we should recognize that engineering estimates are exactly what they are it's a guesstimate it's a guess yeah and yeah. It, and if as we get closer and we recognize, you know what, we mis under we underestimated something or mis misunderstood something, we should revise and change and adjust instead right. of you know staunchly holding people to it. You know, you need to do that. It's hard though, whenever you, especially you know, going back to kind of what we talked about with company plans. If you make a six month plan or a one year plan and you do it based on those estimates, then you have to come back and say, you know what. You know how we said this was going to take three months? It's right. going to be nine months. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. Yeah, you got to, you know, my thing with estimates like that is like, I always, before I give an estimate to somebody, is like, let me try two things here. Number one, um, let me refer to something I did in the past. I couldn't talk mm-hmm. before. Like, can I take something and, all right, this is the same idea, but different context. So that took that long, yada, yada, yada. The second option, what I used to tell my developers, my team used to do was like, okay, let's go from beginning to end as fast as possible, mm. right? Don't, no polish, no nothing. Mm. Like I remember the first time we, uh, I convinced my companies, like we should totally move to AWS, which is like, mm. there's no way in the hell you're estimating that <laughs> correctly. Yeah. Or and we were guess. like, and the, the, just to kind of, back up here we were like six months off target but that's a different story <laughs> <laughs> but but the one thing we did though is we were able to 
accurately predict like getting like everything onto Amazon. Hmm. We ran into the unknowns of like exactly. making everything work together hmm. and the migration part, right? Hmm. The stuff that we didn't try to do begin to end. So what we did was like, okay, let's host a like index.html website on AWS in Docker using GitHub on a continuous pipeline as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. What's the quickest route to do this? Screw security, screw mm -hmm. everything, just get to beginning to end, yeah. right? And that taught us like, okay, here's what we learned about this. We learned that we should use this tool, not that tool. So mm -hmm. you're not going in heavy hitting, but you can mm -hmm. do like a ton of those like smaller experiments, like throughout a week, right? The next week come around, hey, what's your estimate? I have a better idea now, Yeah, you know, maybe absolutely. it's like, you know, maybe I'm still off by, you know, thousands of meters, but it's like, it's more accurate. But the more tests yeah. we do like this, and think about it is also what an estimate is. I like to keep adjusting the estimate mm -hmm. as the project go on, right? So it's like, yeah. okay, next week, here's an update. Here's the new estimate. Here's what mm -hmm. we've learned. Here's what we failed to understand before. And here's how we're fixing the problem. That mm -hmm. way, everyone involved is aware of the issue. So when you are six months behind, everyone knows why. It's yeah. not like, a, oh my God, it's like this due date came January, but you're clearly not done. Like, yeah. you know, but no one's surprised because you kept them updated. You explain that it's, ev ev it's an ever moving target. You know, mm -hmm. there's been projects where it's like, great, like this developer learned, did something cool, learned something new, cut the timeline in half. Great. Mm. Like for this project, we're ahead of schedule. Mm -hmm. So it's about, continually providing updates and yeah that's why i try to do that with the the work that i do by myself where mm. i only plan like a week a week uh, out basically like a week yeah. mm -hmm. plan another week i just go in like in a waterfall order so it's like one after the other mm -hmm. keep going 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 but that way the stuff that's kind of pushed out i know like what those deadlines are for like a marketing push or something like that I know where to place those in the future. So I'm not yeah. never like, oh my gosh, like I pay for this thing that I'm getting featured on and I'm not ready yet. Well, I was like, don't pay for it yet. Yeah. <laughs> right. But mm -hmm. until you get super, no, like I want to hit this target and this is going to happen. So yeah. yeah, it's a moving target. Yeah. Estimation is a heart. It's moving yeah. Target. No one likes that answer, but. <laughs> no, but it's an, it's an honest and yeah. truthful answer, you know? Yeah. And, and that's, that's the reality is we should embrace that reality instead of yeah. trying to ignore it you know um and the other thing too that i think is important that can help is exactly what you said which is having somebody do a spike essentially mm -hmm. yeah what's exactly. what can we get something like a statically hosted site as quickly as possible what would that take so you could plan your this week's sprint or, or whatever and you're thinking about the projects and the work that you're going to be currently working on and you'll allocate some time for research to try something do this that way you will make an informed estimate and instead of just essentially totally guessing you will have yeah. somebody it's kind of like going back to the helicopter analogy yeah. or let's say you're in an airplane because that makes more sense you'll send out a skydiver to jump out and that skydiver right. will scope out the the land and say you know what, I was falling the whole time, but I was able to make some measurements and yeah. that, that can it, help you make it. It kind of reminds me of, um, this is the way that, I don't know if you saw in the news recently, but China recently landed uh, a rover on the moon, on the moon, so on Mars. Really? This is the, yeah, I didn't, this is no, the I didn't see second that. nation awesome. to do that. But And for China, it's super interesting to me how they approach space because they mm. literally have like no experience, right? They're like, we have no idea how to do this or what we're doing, right? We're just like trying a bunch of stuff and kind of throwing money at it. But what they did was they sent a rocket uh, to Mars. Like NASA is like a, a pro and that's been doing this for a while. What they mm -hmm. do was like, we're gonna go straight to the atmosphere, do the crane land. And mm -hmm. we're also gonna fail the first time, but keep doing that. And they mm -hmm. do what's like reinforcement type mm. thing, right? And they're probably bad at estimates and they're always over budget, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly like the James Webb is. Space Telescope. Exactly. That originally exactly. was going to be 2018. Now it's 2021 Ex still. <laughs> exactly. But when you look at China, China is like, we have this tight budget. We give it to our space station, a space organization, and they do their thing. 
they sent a craft to Mars. This craft orbited Mars. It was the first lander to spend time in in, in space before hmm. landing. Hmm. They found this perfect, like, open area. There's no rocks, no hills, just like almost like a desert type place, hmm. right? Just super flat. They're like, great. We're going to land there. We're going to send something to test and understand how far it is. Mm-hmm. Then we're going to land. And it was successful, right? But that's mm. when talk- they took more of that approach of like, let's try yeah. and see what's going on, not just go straight in and mm-hmm. hopefully it all like, you know, is successful. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're trying to go for blazing glory, right? Like, yeah. Not- China doesn't want that. China doesn't no. tell you they that's fail. That's not the American way. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's kind of interesting too, good China, because like they landed, but they don't like publicly show their stuff. They just mm. like, they literally put like a text press release being like we landed <laughs> hmm. you know because <laughs> they're like we don't want to show you our failure that's not yeah. what we're about yeah but it's just hmm. a just a completely different approach hmm. i think that approach is how we should tackle more things hmm. especially when you're like going somewhere unknown like to space yeah right like flying totally. that same kind it kind of reminds me of like your airplane analogy or right? like hmm. okay let's send some skydiving let's let's spike this let's try this out let's see how far it is that's gets a better picture before we just throw an estimate out there. We're completely wrong mm-hmm. and we fail. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And then, and when you fail that way too, you have no one to blame. You have to blame mm-hmm. everyone, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, which always is not great either. But, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, and you know, there's something to be said too for just trying, experimenting, testing. You know, right. you can, don't guess it, test it. Is yeah. I, I've heard it's like a mantra. Yeah. Um, at Google, apparently, I don't know. I don't give know your, if that's true, but yeah, give yourself the space to fail. You know, mm-hmm. like my guys when they were learning AWS, it's like great, you're getting your own AWS account, destroy mm-hmm. it, like do mm-hmm. a bunch of stuff, and we'll just delete it and move on, right? Or mm-hmm. here's your that's a good power of like source code development too, right? Like here's mm-hmm. your own branch, do your own thing, <laughs> don't yeah. break anything, yeah. you know? Or here's your own Sage server. That's super important. Definitely mm-hmm. give, you know, like create test environments experiment don't yeah. go for perfect the first time it's just no for sure but i think way, so. yeah but i think going to you what you're saying you have to create an environment and a culture where that's that's the norm and that's expected yeah. and that's safe to do you know you need yeah. to create a culture of MVP experimentation culture. Yeah, yeah absolutely yeah because a lot of people and and i find this common in the u.s in particular i mean like that's really my own only real experience <laughs> <laughs> but People are so afraid of failing or showing yeah. failure or making mistakes, but that's so backwards and so wrong. You know, that's fail yeah. success is built on failure. Yeah. You have to, you know, there's this cliche uh, of Edison. He said it took him like a hundred different times to invent, invent the light bulb. And he didn't, he says, I didn't fail 99 times. I learned 99 ways not to make a light bulb. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. And all yeah. the great inventors have done this. It's yeah. it's not that they were perfect. It's the fact that they were willing to make mistakes. It's, yeah. you know. Just go go fail. Like, seriously. Fail, yeah. fail fast. Right. Do it fast, though. That's my thing. Do it fast. Fail like fast. As fast as possible. Because mm-hmm. if you don't, you're wasting time and energy yeah. and all that mm-hmm. stuff. Fail fast. Yeah. I remember going to, like... Going to our CEO a lot, being like, "Yeah, I failed at this. <laughs> Pretty spectacular." <laughs> but here's a, here's what I learned. What I learned. Sec- <laughs> second attempt. Like, let's go again, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not giving up. It's mm-hmm. Just paying I failed, you know. Mm-hmm. But that's kind of part of it. It's like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I think part of that too is that culture is so important because one of the things that when you do the MVP culture, like mm-hmm. you learn, like like fundamental things that could be wrong with a idea or a product yeah. that's not even like engineering right mm. like oh my gosh like okay this we built this thing is super small but guess what uh onboarding is going to be a bitch mm-hmm. because there's no like one two step it's like no we need your like it's a corporate account you got to do all this corporate stuff we got to like get like your dean of a school to sign off it's a whole sales process. Now you're like, yeah. oh my gosh, like we never prepare for a sales process. Mm-hmm. But now you can plan that process while you're in the next iteration, right? Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. like, but at the same time, you can get customer feedback. You know, it's a continuing cycle. Your product becomes so much better. And you just go straight on 1.0. One, 1. I think you've already failed. Like, don't, yeah. <laughs> don't launch 1.0, launch 1.2. 
yeah mm-hmm. get feedback fail like fail so like, hard you know yeah like for like sure. for i think for visitor kit like i think maybe now is the 1.0 i just implemented stripe you can finally pay me money like nice. that's <laughs> you know it's like it's like i don't need that that's not the if, if i built stripe the, the first time and no one buys it i wasted how much time on stripe mm-hmm. i could have been building stuff that people actually want to convince yeah. them to sign up you know yeah 100 percent. you know i i've heard to that point i heard the story that valve when they were launching steam the reason why they offered a 30 day trial is to give themselves 30 day to build <laughs> payments. <laughs> you know? nice. So I love that. Yeah. It's it's smart. You know, don't build features until you need them. And that's yeah. the whole startup, you know, lean startup approach, which I love. And if you if you haven't read the book, I absolutely recommend it. If you have time, you know, it's probably like on your long list of books. But <laughs> the lean startup is great. I mean, really you don't have to read the book so much as learning the lessons from it. And that's exactly what they advocate for is building MVPs to validate the product, the market, mm-hmm. everything, you know, mm-hmm. because too many people, they have this idea for an app and they try to build these features and then they try to validate that with customers. But that's wrong because you could end up building to your point. You could end up building this product and you assume that everybody knows what it does only to realize that onboarding's a bitch. What if you mm-hmm. built a really, really minimal product that doesn't even completely work and you can figure that out beforehand, before you even launch, before you release? Right. So you iterate right. in public, you iterate with real customers, you collect real feedback, you're, you're making informed decisions, you're not making assumptions based on what you think customers want, you know? Exactly. So it's, it's yeah. really important <laughs> to get that feedback as early as possible. Yeah, to tie that back to the like timelines and stuff and expectations, I, I do that for my products as well, where, you know, like for Visitor Kit, it was like, okay, I'm going to do this up to this point until I have one customer. Mm-hmm. When I have one person install Visitor Kit, then I'll do this next thing and the next goal is five. And you just keep extending that out. Yeah. But that yeah. way, like now you're, you're kind of more clear on like what path that you're going on you know, your expectations that you can be crystal clear. It's like, okay, that's my current rate that I'm going. I'm getting customers at this rate. I don't have these features yet. I haven't marketed it this way yet, but that way you can kind of back into like, okay, at my current rate, my goal is to get like, you know, like 10,000 MMR, like here's a patch you're on now to get there. You know, it's not yeah. a short one, but it's clear. Or maybe you have a product that's super successful and people mm-hmm. are signing up, people are paying for stuff and they're getting there faster, you know, but it's mm-hmm. like, it's not clear when you work in these iterations in one chunk and hopefully it's cross your fingers and hopefully it works. Yeah. Don't, don't, yeah. Build, start, don't build businesses that way. <laughs> yeah. 100%. I mean, a lot of people try that, you know? Yeah. And it I doesn't. <laughs> Yeah. And it doesn't always work, you know, like going, going back to your example of co- going to your CEO and you said, well, here's what I learned. That's what a lot of startups do with venture mm-hmm. capital. Yeah. They have this yeah. idea, they pitch it to VCs and, you know, they get a million dollars and they build a way in, in private. And then they try to launch only to find out that customers didn't want what they thought, yeah. Pivot. what they assumed. Yeah. yeah. And then it's like, well, what did we, we what did we do well we learned we spent a million dollars to learn this it's like could we have learned this lesson with only ten thousand dollars or a thousand dollars you know maybe that's, maybe yeah exactly yeah, maybe. that's why you experiment and you test and iterate because you i mean really that's kind of the heart of the lean startup book is mm. find your riskiest assumptions like if this is false nothing else matters right we yeah. assume the product that the onboarding experience is going to be easy. Validate that. Yeah. You know, start with that. What's the minimum you have to build? Frankly, a lot of times you don't have to build anything. You can just use a mock-up or a prototype or yeah. Envision yeah. Or, or Figma yeah. and find people. You know, there's um, yeah. there a lot of great courses on, on Lean UX and they say, get out of the building. Go find people, real potential customers. Or, you know, you could. there are a lot of great online tools these days that you can use. You know, with Corona, mm-hmm. you're probably not going out. <laughs> I mean, you could, <laughs> yeah, you yeah. could still, you know, yeah. like depending on the situation and stuff. But yeah, you want to validate it, those assumptions as quickly as possible, 
and avoid building until you absolutely have to. Engineering is expensive. Yep. Your estimates are always wrong. Right. It's tough. It's tough. So find ways to validate and test those assumptions as quickly and as um, cheaply as possible. Mm -hmm. What are some of the ways that you guys have done that with per what up uh, with Perflow? Yeah, with Perflow. That's uh, that's exactly what we've done is using prototypes. The first mm. the first version of the app was basically just like a Figma, a Figma file, and we would that's show true. that to people and we would collect feedback and then we'd do we do demos to people with that and then we started building the app in the background and whenever we had pieces of the app that were functional we would show those features and that functionality in the demos and we would do webinars and mm -hmm. we'd show people like here's how this works and then at one point i built some controls for myself to trigger uh, certain functionality on the back end so i would pre-trigger messages so we would build as little as possible in order to see. demonstrate a feature yeah in order to show that and yeah. people would see that during calls you know either um in a webinar or in like a demo or a vc call whatever that was when people would see that they would ask questions and we would iterate we would modify the layout and the version that we have now that customers are actually using is so significantly different <laughs> from the original version that um Bensi originally had designed and that's a great thing you know yeah and frankly yeah. that we, we constantly get compliments on the app and people are like oh your ux and ui is so great it's like it took us a year <laughs> <laughs> yeah. to get to this point yeah. and the, the truth is the original version of the app was way more ambitious it had like 10 yeah. pages it had yeah. like this huge crazy dashboard um i mean like what we have now is it's only three three pages basically and two of them are, are virtually identical um, and then the rest of the app just kind of focuses on the core and it's better to build something that really attacks a problem well yeah. than try to build a swiss army knife there's like this joke yeah of, what is a swiss army good at nothing <laughs> you know right <laughs> it's kind of crappy at 10 different things and nobody exactly. really loves them but if exactly. you have if you need it you know it, there's a use case there's it fills the need but people would much hmm. rather have a really great knife and a really great wrench and a really great screwdriver than like a knife that doesn't really cut a screwdriver that bends when you try to use it you know? yeah yeah you know we're like one of those spork type things right? yeah exactly <laughs> it's like, you know? terrible fork and a spoon right? yeah exactly <laughs> but it, it has a use case right you know yeah. so clearly yeah. um like if you want to just be super cheap <laughs> and yeah it's gentle. a convenience thing right yeah. it's mm -hmm. like a or yeah, like an all out, like, this is like, yeah, like a worst case scenario type thing. Yeah, yeah. For sure. no, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. hmm. Interesting. Yeah, man. It's hard. <laughs> yeah, it's not easy. It's you know, and that's, hard. Yeah, Startups that's why, hard. that's why so many of them fail. And a lot of people, they don't even do it, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. Like for me, like, I think like, it's hard, but I'll just keep doing it. Hmm. Because it's like, like what's really the worst thing that can happen? Hmm. It's like I waste a bunch of time. It's like, what hmm. else I'm gonna be doing? <laughs> Playing video games, anyway. <laughs> right? It's not like I'm doing anything else, you know. Hmm. So, yeah. One yeah. thing, one thing, one of the things that I realized recently, uh, as I'm building Visitor Kit, was hmm. a problem I had with like previous projects was I gave up too fast. Hmm. I gave up way too fast. It's like, hmm. oh this isn't getting the expectations I have, like it's six months in, like one person signed up or mm. maybe there's like thousands of people using the product, but no one's paying. Mm. You know what I mean? Like you just give mm. up, just like, yeah. this didn't reach my expectations, but if you just gave it more time, like you can make it work. You can pivot. You can talk to those people that you do have understanding, like why, why are mm. you using this product and things like that. So yeah. I think back to, a project I created um, probably last year, I think, <laughs> probably early last year. It was called Gosabe. So Gosabe, I forgot what it meant in some weird language. I have a mm. terrible <laughs> naming stuff. But Gosabe mm. was a website builder tool. Mm. Basically, it was like my personal website. It was like, here's a photo, here's some text, here's some social links, and here's a contact form that you can people can easily submit stuff to and you can 
quickly view how many people contacted you. And there was a bunch of themes and you can mm. do one for RSVPing for a wedding, for example, mm. like these really simple websites that people were asking for. I was like, mm. I'll just build these, but not build Squarespace mm. or something. Else. Cause I think Squarespace is really overpriced and mm. very plastic to me, in my opinion. Um, mm. It's not, you can't really make things unique in that mm -hmm. way. At the same time, it's like, what if you just made these sites really simple? Mm. And I, I built this product. I built payments in it day one because that's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> Don't do that. But I did it and no one no one ever paid for it. Mm. But I did have like 2,000 people create websites, wow. right? That's yeah, awesome. it's like, that's fantastic. But you know what yeah. happened? I gave up because no one paid for it. Mm. But it's like, at the same time, it's like, I never emailed mm -hmm. or tried to talk to any of those people. Mm -hmm. I just try to find more people. I just had the wrong approach of mm. expectation was like, you would like it, you would pay for it. But it's like, maybe the pay features are not what you were needing or mm. it didn't, you know. Yeah, make there was a misalignment game, somewhere. Mm -hmm. Right. But the yeah, it's a misalignment, but it's not like this is a complete failure. <laughs> no, not at all. Yeah, and, but I gave up. And then so yeah. I think back at that, it's like, I could have just kept going with that. I could have kept you know, talk, try, talking to customers, try to understand like what things they, that they were missing. Yeah. It, it was a one page thing, right? It's like, mm -hmm. did you want more than one page? Like, you know, like what does mm -hmm. that look like or something? So yeah, mm -hmm. I think about the back to that project a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. Stock photo project I made, that was really great. Gave up on that too. Mm -hmm. That one was a different problem. It was, mm -hmm. and this is a problem that's much harder to deal with where this product was very expensive to run. Hmm. very very expensive server costs and hmm. processing because mm -hmm. i was like i gotta do machine learning right i gotta like understand what's in these images there's a cat there's a dog and automatically tag them right like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it, it was kind of like this marketplace style thing too where you could as a photographer you could upload your pictures and for every thousand page views i paid you based on your, you know, people viewed you, right? Mm. So it's like you would get a dollar for every ten thousand views you got on your image, right? And the tier would go up. It was great. the The contributor side, tons of contributors. The the like stock photo side, tons of visitor. The problem was the visitors were from like India, Brazil, mm. Malaysia, which is like the worst CPM you could possibly yeah. get. Not right. monetizable, really. Exactly. So it's like, oh, like, so I'm, I'm basically like cutting, I'm like basically like equaling out here. I'm getting tons of traffic, which means I'm paying for a, a shit ton of image, like hosting and CD yeah. and stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's like, I gave up because it was too expensive and it's mm -hmm. like, I don't want to do this anymore. Right. But it's mm -hmm. like, the deal was solid. I just, but it just literally would have dug in mm. and kept going. I probably would have made it work. I probably would have figured yeah. out a different mm -hmm. solution, you know, because I basically my problem was like I had terrible SEO in the US, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Because of services like Unsplash and all mm -hmm. those other services mm -hmm. makes sense. But it's like, yeah, it's like once again, it's like just give up, move on. We got a better yeah. idea. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's almost like you did yeah. engineering. Mm -hmm. Engineering feat, amazing, right? Mm. <laughs> The rest of it, nah, failed. So that's yeah. it's kind of one of my things that it's hard about startups. It's just just keep going, keep mm -hmm. going until like you literally can't go on anymore, or mm -hmm. like yeah, you literally can't go on anymore. I think that's the only answer. Yeah, but at the yeah. same time, you know, there are projects that you should let go of. You should, you know, like you said earlier, pivot. You should pivot sometimes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um. The hardest thing is to find that, well, I mean, the hardest thing, you'll get a different answer depending on who you talk to, but getting customers and, and like solid traffic, consistent traffic, that's really challenging. So your Kosabe example, that you were in a really great position, right? especially if you had engaged customers, engaged mm -hmm. users, you know, you could have found out what is that sweet spot, like what is just enough pain for them that they'd be willing to pay to solve exactly. you know so exactly. but there are situations like with your stock photo example you would have to make a pretty decent amount of money in order to be able to cover those costs and maybe 
the amount of time investment would not have justified it in the long run you know and your com- yeah. competition would have been hard who knows you know like yeah. it's hard to say for sure but there's like the same time though you know this one uh, you know the same time i had some ideas that i never like done was like mm. oh what if i limited the photographers mm. and made that like an invite process mm. right so there's like quality over quantity now in the photos yeah mm-hmm. that's an example of things i could have done where it's like mm. okay if i had less photographers and i could just pay them mm-hmm. then that would be better right mm-hmm. and then at the same time it's like i need to really invest in the seo side mm. of the product itself it's like those two things would have been something to try at least right? i didn't even try those i yeah. just gave up mm. <laughs> right so i think there is a point there's like yes it's like a imbalance but at the same time it's like did you Really, I think about like, did you put your effort, your full effort mm. into this, mm-hmm. or did you just give up, or you didn't know? I think for Gosabe, I didn't know I needed to reach out to customers. I just mm. wasn't in that space. It's like, mm. I don't know. I built it. It's cool. Don't you want it? <laughs> like, I don't understand. Like, mm. just pay for it. Like, yeah, you know. But I think that's, yeah, it's tricky. Yeah. Well, that's why. That's exactly why. You know, these days it's it's becoming increasingly rare for single founders, you know, like everybody yeah. has their own specialty and there's only so much time in the day. And if you're focusing on engineering features, you, you know, you're going to be reluctant to sacrifice or give up that time to be speaking to customers, you know, it's possible, yeah. it's certainly possible, but it significantly increases your timeline for accomplishing anything, you know, it, yep. that being said, I think it's incredibly valuable for engineers to be speaking to customers to understand their pain points intimately and intuitively, because if you're constantly relying on secondhand information, you're playing a game of telephone and people, Mm -hmm. they, I mean, we're probably all familiar. I mean, you and I probably (laughs) at least are familiar with the game of telephone where you'll say one word to another person and then the next person and then the next person. And you may have said something like, there's a cat that is climbing a tree wearing a fireman's hat. And then someone says like, there's a cat with a fireman's hat. And they, they totally left out the tree. Right. And they say something like, there's the a cat. Fireman's a trying to get the cat. <laughs> yeah, there's a cat with a hat. Like fireman. Yeah. And, and then yeah. by the end, you, you'll get something yeah. totally random. And it's like, how did that get lost in translation? <laughs> yeah. Because unless you have, unless you're passing this specific um, artifact, down mm. to people that then they see that they're not changing it's immutable there's no way that you can guarantee that the person at the very end received the exact message that you initially conveyed yeah absolutely so it's a challenge you know it so. is yeah time Ugh. yeah time yeah. for sure you gotta do it it's it's required it's not mm. optional it's required so yeah yeah that's kind of been part of my like expectations changing because I've, I've been in this period where I've been feeling like am I like using my time hmm. well I look hmm. back it's like yeah if I were to go back and like go to like February 1st when I first started doing all this stuff it's like I wouldn't have changed anything hmm. like what I based on what I know now I would have but at that time I wouldn't have done anything differently I'm using hmm. my time properly hmm. it just the expectation for me was like okay you're one person, you're doing literally everything. So just extend your timeline on like where you think you should be in a year Mm -hmm. from now or six months from now, like extend that out. Don't put the pressure on yourself. It's like clearly like the more time you put in, the more it grows, the more like it's becoming something, but it's like, you have to put that time in, but don't feel the pressure of like, go, 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 go when you have been doing that there's not yeah. much more you could do but yeah going back mm-hmm. to that like yeah just one person you know mm-hmm. like this week i've spent i don't know how much time just working on a marketing site mm. like <laughs> you know and also emailing customers but trying to get them to do calls and things like that but mm. i'm also trying to like explain the product in a different way based on what mm. i'm learning from customers and yeah people up, you know it's like but there's a feature that needs to be built that people probably would like to use like mm. idea of sending you like a weekly report of your analytics mm-hmm. that's probably a good idea for retention right yeah totally. i can't build that and build a marketing site at the same mm-hmm. time mm-hmm. you know <laughs> expectation is like all right just do this one and when this one's done you move on to the next one but mm-hmm. just know that like you just you can't have both of these this yeah. month ready to go at a decent quality like no like don't yeah. do that you have to so. pick 
you have to yeah exactly focus. exactly this is a mm. pivotal moment because it's like i need to stay focused stay with the path that i'm on it's just gonna take longer don't really care about timelines expectations right now just keep going keep going you'll get there you'll get that first paid customer i literally have three people i emailed was like you're actually over my pay plan <laughs> didn't have the tools to bill you. I didn't tell them that part, but it's like, <laughs> hey, if you pay, I'll give you this, like literally give you this crazy discount because mm. you're the first paid customer. Like just, mm. I literally want you to try my payment system, first of all. Right. <laughs> I have tried to it. Prove that it was. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just literally charge your cart. So, mm. you know, it's like, here's the, I've even changed the plans based on everyone's usage and stuff like that mm. too. You know, so they're, they make more sense and stuff. It's like, yeah. I, you know it's like most of the people like that are ready to go it's like two of them are like in the eu it's like great i changed the prices to fit the eu too there you mm -hmm. go right nice. you sign up the next three days you get this crazy discount so mm -hmm. that's awesome yeah but hopefully <laughs> hopefully they do it <laughs> right because if not i actually don't know what to do <laughs> hmm. it's like do i like turn your account off like, I actually hmm. don't, I actually don't have a backup plan. I just, I didn't expect to like run into like people were over the plan. Like it's hmm. crazy. Cause I have two people who use visitor kit more than I use visitor kit internally for visitor kit and all my other products. Hmm. It's like, that's amazing. That's great. Yeah, that is I amazing. need a testimonial from you too. Email me back. Like, yeah. <laughs> you, well, know? <laughs> you know what you could do uh, with some of these people, you could just, you know, you could, so what I would suggest, especially if they're doing that, you could just request that they give you a testimonial or whatever. And you I, yeah, I find that too. Yeah. For, one of, you know, Cause one of the guys like his website, it's, is really awesome. I would actually use it really great. Hmm. Like it's a website designed for engineers and designers. Like, hmm. dude, this is perfect. I actually really like your website. Like I used it <laughs> for visitor kids. Like, Hey, awesome. dude, testimonial. I'll take literally like 15 minutes of your time, like hmm. 15 minutes of your time. And just give you like a term, I'll give you like one year, mm. 20 year free. It's on the house, right? Yeah. Like I just literally want to chat for 15 minutes, one year of the product. So, but you know, I think the problem is he hasn't even opened the email yet. I don't think he's reading his email. He's like mm. me. He's like, oh, what is the sales? Yeah. Crap here? <laughs> you know what? You know what I may suggest? Uh, um, do you know, I don't know if mixed panel still does this, but on their free plan, it, there was a certain feature set that it was free forever as long as you had a powered by mix panel on the oh, site. So if that site was incredibly that. valuable yeah. to you, yeah. you could say like, Hey, I'll let you, I'll let you keep this free. If yeah. you say powered by visitor kit at the bottom. Boom. That's interesting. That's interesting. I'll help with my backlinks too. For yeah, sure. exactly. <laughs> yeah. It'll That's give you increased exposure. Yeah. Uh, validate your use case. Hmm. Like prove it out. Like, other people see like, oh, wow, if such and such site uses it, then yeah. then my site could handle it no problem. You know, it validates your product for you. Right. And that's more right. powerful than a testimonial. It's like, you know what? Here's the badge. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. May consider that. Yeah, it's, it's it, it, my original plan was to build a product, get validated, and then move to like credit card required when you sign mm -hmm. up to mm -hmm. solve this problem. Yeah. If I did mm -hmm. that, I'd never have this problem. But I didn't build that. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to see if yeah. people would sign up and install it. And yeah, it's a, you know. But it's like thinking back now. It's like okay, going forward, I, I kind of I know how to solve this, and I'm also hesitant to add it mm -hmm. at the same time because it's like another friction to get people to sign up. You know? Yeah. No, for sure. I don't think you did anything wrong. I think I think what you did is great because you validated the need before you spend any time doing that. But I, right. I don't think it's a problem to now email customers and say, especially if you say like, hey, new version of visitor kit launching at the end of May and starting, you know, June 1st, the, you know, I'm going to cap usage at this point and then you have to pay otherwise, yeah. you know. Well, that was clear up front. It was, like it, that yeah, was it was clear normal. up front when they signed up. They just, there's no action to take against it. Mm -hmm. Right. You would, mm -hmm. you couldn't even see like last week, like how, what was your total, like, you know, page view count? You couldn't even see that number, mm -hmm. you know, like you had to like calculate it yourself to figure out how much, if you needed to pay me 
type mm. thing. But yeah, yeah, yeah I know. Even know. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So it's kind of par- par- partially like on me to like mm. fix that, get that right. Oh, hold on a second, my door just opened. <laughs> Make my little one open the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She might sneak in here. <laughs> <laughs> she knows to open up doors now. So professional yeah. door. <laughs> <laughs> what happens? Yeah. Well, I think this is. Uh, I mean, if we can go into after after yeah. hours yeah. or or yeah. uh, can, I mean, I don't know how much time yeah. we have left. But. Yeah. Um. I just want to end by saying thank you for for listening. If you have any questions, you can email us at hello at Thomas Error. Dot com and also you can leave comments on the itunes like podcast landing page in the comments yeah. review section we'll check those out we definitely want to start taking in some questions that you may have about your business about starting a business questions for us etc what have you got we're, we're down yeah. for a favorite color we'll save that for someone to ax it but you know, <laughs> just let us know thank you for listening we really do appreciate it yep awesome